Happy New Year, and welcome to this act of morning's worship throughout the district. We say may God continue to speak to us as we listen to his voice. So the St. Lucia Circuit welcome you to this morning's devotion. Let us allow the choir to rend its introit. Let us continue our worship and respond appropriately. Mysterious maker God, gather us in, that being close to you, we will understand your intention for creation. Sweet Savior of all, weave us into one, that living your ways, we will create communities of faith and peace. Powerful spirit of renewal, gather us in, that treasuring the past, we will boldly shape the future. Holy one in three, weave us into one, that women and men, boys and girls together, may be the signs of your presence, the weavers of your communities, and the witnesses to your coming. Gather us in this day 
so we might gather strength from you. Amen. We continue with our opening hymn number two. Oh, come, let us all unite and sing. Let us sit and prepare for our prayers of adoration, confession, and thanksgiving led by Sister Carlin Mason. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, our Heavenly Father, so loving, at this time we come together in our different spaces, yet uniting to adore you, Father God, to worship you and sing praises to your matchless name. As we awoke this morning, Lord God, we were privileged to see another day, another day in this new year of 2022. Father God, you are so awesome. Your majesty reigns over all. And as we look around and see your creation, what more can we say but Abba, Father, you are worthy of our praise. And yet this morning, oh Lord God, we are so mindful, mindful of the fact that 
even though you have blessed us with all your mercies and the richness of your creation, yet we have failed you, Father. We have failed you because we have not done the things you expect us to do. Father, we have missed opportunities where we could have spread your word, shown your love. And so we say, forgive us. Forgive us that we have ailed you in so many ways. Forgive us that we have not reached out to our brother, our sister, as we should have done. Forgive us, Father, that we failed to show you by the way we live, whether at work, whether in church, and even, Father God, in our own homes. But as we come before you now, asking you to forgive us, to cleanse us, Lord God, from all unrighteousness, we do so in humility. We do so, Father God, with contrite hearts. And we know that once we've come before you repenting for all the sins that we have committed and for those that were done by omission, whether it caused someone to stumble, to go astray, we know because of your love for us by sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross at Calvary, that by his blood, our sins will be washed away. And we will be able to go forth this day with a clean slate because of, again, your mercy. And because of this, Lord God, we can say thank you, thank you, thank you for all you have done and continue to do for us. We thank you that you have given us friends and family. We thank you, Lord, for the technology that is allowing us to meet at this time across the district. We thank you for those persons to whom you have given the skill set to operate the technology in our different spaces, in our islands. We thank you, Father God, that you have given us leaders, our bishop, our district secretary, and all the officers who are representing us at this district council. And as we thank you, Lord God, for their lives, and we thank you for sparing our lives. We thank you, Father God, for the opportunity, the opportunity that you have given us to spread the good news that there is life eternal. And so as we reset our spiritual lives to be renewed, to carry out your work. This day, these prayers are offered in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer, our brother, and our friend. Amen. We invite the circuit shore to bring us the welcome and greetings, Brother Marshall. My brothers and sisters, a blessed good morning to you all. 
I am happy to welcome you to this morning's devotion. I bring you greetings from the St. Lucia circuit. Welcome all. It is our sincere hope that our short program this morning will be a blessing to you. We look forward to a very fruitful council meeting today and in the coming days. May God richly bless us all as we meet and share together for the benefit of our church, our district, and most importantly, to the glory of our God. Once again, I say welcome to you all. Christian friends, let us join in singing hymn 173. O soul, are you weary and troubled? Hymn 173. Kindly stand. Let us turn to the ministry of the word and read the collect prayerfully together. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior Jesus Christ 
and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the wor whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our reading is taken from Exodus chapter 20, reading from verse 28 to 11. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall, do, you shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. My brothers and sisters, the word of the Lord. Let us stand and sing hymn 147. Come down, O love divine. Hymn 147. Kindly stand. Kindly sit. 
Come down, O love divine, seek out this soul of mine. At this time, we are going to invite Reverend Smith to bring us the word, resetting our spiritual life for renewal. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, the beginning and the end, the author and finisher of our faith, to you to we look to at this hour. Come, come, Spirit, our life is grace upon grace. Grace us with your presence, the indwelling of your Spirit and your Word. This we pray and ask in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Resettling, resetting our spiritual life for renewal. Today, there is a notion that productivity and acquisition is the sign of a good and successful life. There is a Babel mentality to produce more. There is an Egyptian mentality to attain more. A economy, meaning a household of life in which people are commodities to produce, produce, produce. There is a need of resetting. And to us comes this text of Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 to 11, in the commandment that is requiring the remembrance of Sabbath to a people called Israel who had just left Egypt a place in which their life was used to build an economy. And they were in a system in which the worship of the might, of the strength, of the powerful. Yet God has liberated them. Emancipation has happened. A physical transition from the place of Egypt in pursuit of the promised land. But God saw that it was not only enough for a physical movement. There was also a need of a resetting of their spiritual life. For although they had left Egypt, the Egypt spirituality of the commodity produce, produce, produce were very much embedded in their life. The choice of the text is so profound because it speaks of how God not only liberated them from the physical Egypt, but also liberated them from the spiritual Egypt in which their attitude, their perception, and their lives were totally ingrained in the economy of producing, producing, producing more. Here God reminded them that the narrative of observance of Sabbath was deeply rooted in the narrative of God liberating his people. Yet today, in our society, it is prevalent that we live in a society which asks us uh, to do more. A hymn that we began in preparation for our sermon today reminds us, for none can guess its grace till he becomes the place where the Holy Spirit makes his uh, dwelling. The deep 
within us that when the Spirit of God, the spirituality of God, comes in and dwells within our lives, we would experience the work of the Spirit at work to settle this economy in which God wants, that we are no longer in competition, the fear, the limited resources, the pressure to preach, exceptionally to lead worship and professionally to perform, that we live and move life as the world expects of us, but we do not live our lives in what God expects. Here comes the reset in which God wanted to the people of Israel. And it comes in the fourth commandment on the observant of Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath. Keep it holy. Sabbath is not about a day. Sabbath is not uh, about a rigid system, but it is a rhythm of life in which God is acknowledged and also our humanity and dignity is celebrated. There lies in two of our points today. As we reset our spiritual life for renewal, Sabbath reminds us of this resetting in two concepts. First, that it resets our relationship with God. The resetting of the spiritual life of Israel for renewal in light of the Sabbath was to reset their relationship with God. They were used to the gods of Egypt who demanded them to work, 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 work. Yet God wanted to remind them, as you worship me, as you honor me, you first begin with rest. And from rest, rest reorientates your life. You are not defined by what you do, but you are defined by your relationship with God. God who is in abundance and gracious and wills us to succeed does not need to relate to us on our doings, but on the grace that he loves us dearly. The image that God wanted to engrave in the lives of the people of Israel, I did not love you for what you have done. I love you just because I love you. And for us, the, the notion that you have to be productive, to be successful, to work hard in order for you to please God or please men is prevalent in the life of the church, and in life of society. Sabbath is a reset of that mindset. Sabbath is a reset of our relationship with God. And in fact, the, new, the Old Testament constantly reminds us of that. From the narrative of creation, apart from knowing God as the creator, when men begin to know and acknowledge God in their life, the first image of God that man kept as a memory was not a working God, it was a God who rested on the seventh day. In this COVID season, this has been a constant reminder to a world that is dominated by capitalism, a world that is dominated by work and production. In these past two years, the world has come to a standstill 
a Sabbath in itself in which God is reminding the world it's not about production. It's not about what we do. It's about our relationship with God. It's a time that we reset the motion and routines and rhythm of our lives and our family and our families. We were given ample time to stay at home. We were given ample time to greet each other in our families and to worship together. I hope in these past few months and years that we come and remember that Sabbath is a reminder to you and me that our lives is not defined by what we do and what we continue to produce. Our lives is defined by our relationship with God in which God had made a resolute to create you and me in his image and we are precious as we are as we come. It reminds us that our life is grace upon grace. Yes, we work so we can earn. Yes, we work that so we can feed. Yes, we work so we can prosper and attain in life. But brothers and sisters in Christ, we forget that we are working in the godly system of a God who provides for us. The system of work and production has given us anxiousness uh, when we do not produce, has given us uh, a life uh, that we blame ourselves when we do not prosper or when we do not live up to what the worldly system expects of us. Sabbath reminds us that in God's economy, God receives and expects and ex accepts you, who you are, to come on this journey to experience God's rest. And from God's rest, from trusting God, from relying on God, you work and live and enjoy life. You do not work, then go and rest. You rest in God. And the rest in God sustains, orients, informs your life and all that you do. This was the message to the people of Israel who were going to the promised land. That Egypt which demand work, work, work. The God of the promised land is a God in which rest informs, dictates, orientates, gives a rhythm of life in which God is honored, in which God is worshipped, in which God reigns supreme. It is a time for us as a church to rethink how we live our lives in the economy of the world that push us to work out our lives and stress out our lives that we don't have any time for God and have, do not have any time to work our life from a point of rest. Let us reset our spiritual life for renewal in the South Caribbean district. Our second and last point today, in light of our resetting of our spirituality for renewal, there is a resetting in our relationship with humanity. Sabbath was the day in which the father, the mother, the children, the, the slave, the male, the female felt what it was to be a human. They would walk from the first day till the sec, uh, sixth day in a family in which the father may in that society overrule and was in control. The slave would be doing all the hard labor 
Sabbath was a day in which he or she would look forward to, in which his dignity and her dignity, her humanity, comes to be celebrated on that day. The resetting of a spirituality in the light of the Sabbath reminds us of the human dignity that is not defined by what we do, our status, our wealth, but just because you are a human being created by God. Today, people are defined by what they do. The respect that we offer people is because of the position and we relate to people because of their position, their wealth, and what they have achieved in life. Sabbath reminds us that our rhythm of life, when it comes to the smallest child, to the oldest, when it comes to those who have and those who have not, when it comes to people who go to church or not, when it comes to gender, Whatever you may describe a person, Sabbath and the rhythm of Sabbath reminds us to relate to people as people created in the image of God. This is what Sabbath, as, as God tried to take away the Egypt out of the Israelites as they were going to the promised land in a place in which they experience oppression, in which they experience abuse, in which they were seen as mere commodity to produce, to produce, to produce. Sabbath was a reminder to them that that was a day in which they could feel, I am a human being and I must be respected as such. These two points, brothers and sisters, sets us in motion as a district that we are not supposed to be of this world. We are to live in this world, but our lives are not supposed to be of the world. The worldly system now uses us and at times it comes into the church and it takes control of the spirituality of what we do and how we do things. I remind us, as we reflect on the importance of Sabbath, not as a day, but a way of life that informs all that we do, from our workplace, to classrooms, to churches, to the way of doing ministry, that we avail ourselves to God. We are again in a district meetings, presentations of reports. And sometimes our meetings are mere just tick box. We have done this, we have done this, we have done this. Let us do this, let us do this, let us do this. Let us think, let us try and complete this in a timely manner from this point to that point. Brothers and sisters in Christ, The church is a place in which we must settle, immerse ourselves in the life and rhythm of God because it is not what we do that affects the life of the church. It was already what God has done and what continues, God continues to do in our life. As we reset the spirituality, our spiritual lives, Let us rethink the spiritual practices of our life, our own time with God, our time of worship and fellowship as community of believers. In this time and this season, people at times are too busy in this time and season for God. COVID, in my deepest reflection, I have seen it as a grace for us as a church and as a community. God is calling us, slow down, brothers and sisters in Christ. Slow down. 
what we think as the normal times is not the real normal life. God is calling us that the normal life is a life in which our relationship with God is paramount. Our relationship with humanity, no matter of what they have, no matter what they do, must reflect the practice and spirituality of a life and rhythm of service, of Sabbath that honors God and God alone. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I give us this time of reflection. I invite us, wherever you are, if your life has been a life of constant living to the expectation of others to do, to do, or not to do, but it is not a life of a deeper relationship with God, I invite you this time to reset your life, to reset your spirituality, to reset your whole life in the light of God's rest that has been offered to us in Jesus Christ. For us as a district, our spirituality, God is calling us to a time to reset our spirituality. God is a God of the economy. There's a lot to be done in the district. It will take more than a meeting to accomplish all of them. But we don't have to be anxious. We don't have to feel hopeless. We just have to avail ourselves to God's rest, the God of rest, to reset, reorientate, transform our lives. For the promised land is before us. Let us pray. Reset, renew, reorientate the lives of people called Methodists across the five nations, across the ten circuits. that we may find our rest in the God who rests, whose life in which we trust. For upon grace, upon grace, we may experience the newness, your newness in our lives, O oh God. Those who are in the rhythm of death, reset them to the renewal of their spiritual life for your glory. Reset the life of your church. We are coming home to you, O God. We are coming home to your rest. We are coming home to your life, to the life in you. Pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Smith. We have heard the word. We trust God to indwell us as we reset our spiritual life for renewal. Brothers and sisters, as we think of our spiritual life 
as a district, as circuits, as leaders, as individuals. Let us respond by singing hymn 176. I've wandered far away from God. Now I'm coming home. as we sing. Let us continue in our act of prayer as we pray our prayers of intercession. Lord, your church have heard your word. Your people, O oh God, are conscious of the fact that we need to reset. We need to be renewed. And so because we have wandered away, we allow, O oh God, so many things to cloud our minds. But now we have experienced your rest. 
we have experienced your Sabbath. We have experienced your personal relationship with you and with man. And so we are journeying back home. So loving God, this hour, I lift before you our district council meeting. I pray, dear God, that as we are about to deliberate, as we are about to set goals and visions for your people here on earth called Methodist, or called to be Christians, or called to come out of their way of life, loving God, we pray that you guide us. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you come and indwell us. And let us allow, O oh God, your spirit to speak and to equip us. Let us, O oh God, listen to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. So, dear God, as every minister, the bishop and the secretary threw down, O oh God, this conference, would listen to your still small voice would be, O oh God, a certain of what you want us to do and where you're taking us. So into your hand, O oh God, we place this district council meeting. Let every man, woman, listen, O oh God, to each other. Let every man, woman, respect each other. Let every man, woman, O oh God, respect the presence of the Holy Spirit. And so today, O oh God, we know that life would not be the same because we are resetting. We are turning around. We are beginning to make a difference. And so we pray, dear God, that as you speak in your still small voice, we have responded. Loving God, we live before you this South Caribbean district. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh. Spirit of the living God, renew. Spirit of the living God, reset. Let our life be one of your service. Let our lives be one of what you have called us to be. And so we pray for every minister, every person within this South Caribbean district under the leadership of our Bishop, Reverend Derek Richards. Loving God, kindly stretch forth your hand. Anoint him, O oh God, from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Anoint him, O oh God, as he opens his mouth, as he listens to your voice. Loving God, indwell him. Let, O oh God, this South Caribbean district be one of a leading district. Let our district be one, O oh God, that sees God in the presence of everything we do. Let this district come to recognize that we cannot do it on our own. And so we need the involvement of God. We need the involvement of the Holy Spirit. We need the involvement of the church in every circuit from the bottom up, O oh God. Let them be a part of this decision making. Let the church together unite. Let the church follow the voice as we follow. Follow, dear God, your word through prayer, through relationship with you, Holy Spirit, and with man. Holy Spirit, let us remember when we think of this relationship with God and with man, it shows us the cross. And therefore, you and I, O oh God, this district must remember the cross when we think of spreading the good news, when we think of taking our rest. When we think of calling upon God, let us remember the cross, the cross, the cross, the cross. Living God, rejuvenate us. Living God, stir up that urge within us. Living God, as a district, we stand with you. We stand together and we are going to fight this battle out. Because you are in the midst. You are calling and counting upon us. And we are willing and ready to reset our spiritual life for renewal. 
So I thank you for this South Caribbean district. And I thank you, O oh God, for the district council. As we meet to deliberate, let your will be done in Jesus' precious name. As a family, you have taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we bring our worship to a close as we sing hymn 405, Revive Thy Work, O Lord, which we will ask the Rep's minister to pronounce the benediction. Hymn number 405. able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish in the presence of his glory with rejoicing. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. 
And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.